Our new edition of Jeffrey Slater's book has an additional chapter in it, 10A, and we're going to be talking about special journals. And there are some problems in uh, that chapter, but I didn't assign any of those. If you want to do a couple of those problems, we could make that another extra credit if you wanted to. I think you'll see those. You won't see them in my accounting lab because remember we used the old edition of the book in there. They didn't have everything ready when we were starting our class. But you could do some of those on paper and submit those and I will give you extra credit on that. So what is a special journal? Here's an example of what the sales journal would look like. And Every transaction when we're recording a cash sale is always going to be the same. We've got debit to accounts receivable and credit to sales. So if we have an account, if we have a, a sales on account, this transaction is always going to be the same. Instead of putting it into the general journal, if we go to the sales journal, the special journal, all we have to do is write that number one time. We're going to post the total to accounts receivable and the total to sales, credit sales, debit accounts receivable. When we post the totals, it's all of the transactions that are listed for um, this particular month, and we would total it for the month. This happened to be March. And then we list those account numbers just at the bottom in parentheses to indicate that we posted. All right? So it saves us just a little bit of time. Record the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger immediately. All right? Now, here's the purchases journal. The purchases transactions, accounts payable credit, purchases debit. That's always going to be the same. We can post the total instead of posting everything individually. Now with the special journals, or let's go back to where we were using the general journal. We had to post for every single transaction that we had to the purchases, didn't we? Every single one. This would just save us a little bit of time how much time it would save us if we were using um, a computerized accounting system, probably no different because as soon as we hit the save button, what does Peach, what did Peachtree do for us? It saved it and it posted it for us to the appropriate accounts. But when we're doing things by hand, this really can save us a little bit of time. Notice we have the terms there. Um, and here's the account number where we posted. And then we're not going to post this total because again, these are sundry accounts if it doesn't fit um, within one of the accounts in the special columns in that special journal. Here's the cash receipts journal. Always a debit to cash if it's cash receipts. Sales discount, we had a special column for that. Accounts receivable, credit, and it would always be a credit if we had a debit to cash. Sales would always be a credit if we had a debit to cash. So we have special columns for here. For the capital, we didn't have a special column, so we have to put it under the sundry. And for, what were these two? Accounts receivable because we still have to post to the subsidiary ledger, which is going to be the page for each one of those individual accounts that are in the accounts receivable. Again, we're not posting the total here, but we would post our numbers there. This would be to our capital, and then this would be um, to our accounts receivable subsidiary ledgers. Again, we put our account numbers down here when we posted, and you can see how much time that would have saved us, but for every problem, we would have had to have pages for the special journals. So I'm not sure why um, 
we've gone back now in this edition of the book to putting the special journals back in because they haven't been in for probably six years. In each one of those new editions of the book, we've just used the general journal. And when we have the general journal, um, everything's just recorded in there. Okay. Um, here's the cash payments. This would look like your check register. This has an additional column for the check number. Okay, cash payments. And then we have cash credit, which it's always going to be a credit if it's in the cash payments. Purchases discount credit, accounts payable debit, and sundry debit. So we do have some special columns in there. Post, post, post. We don't post this, but we have to post this one individually. Okay. Here's our general journal. I don't know that you could say one is easier to use than the other. We're just so comfortable with using the general journal right now. And we've made an allowance for posting twice with our diagonal. Remember, I asked you to put the diagonal here and then to put the diagonal here. So that's a reminder that you have to post that one twice. Our book did not have um, account numbers for accounts payable, nor did it have account numbers for accounts receivable. But in the real world, you probably would have a number there. And we can tell by looking at this that we've posted. is just what um, how those balances would look. Here's a good example of a completed sales journal. We even had a column for our invoice number. That could save us a little bit of time, couldn't it? And our terms are there. It looks like everybody had the same term, but that's not always the case, is it? We could have a special customer that we give a different term to. Or if they don't pay on time, we could even not have any terms, no discount at all. And then we have our debit accounts receivable, credit sales, and we've already posted. We can tell because we've put the numbers down there at the bottom. Here's the cash receipts completed journal. And I do have that PowerPoint up in Canvas if you just want to go back to look at it. And again, if you want to do any of the problems from the Chapter 10A, I will offer those as extra credit.